Christopher Norris here from mining.com.au. Joining me today is CEO and Managing Director of Hillgrove Resources, Lachlan Wallace. Lachlan, great to see you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Over the past year, Hillgrove has advanced the Kanmantu Copper Project from exploration through to a producing asset. What was the journey like for the company? Yeah, perhaps a little bit of background for those that might not be familiar with the Hillgrove story. Uh, the Kanmantu Copper Mine is located just 55 kilometres from Adelaide. It operated as a series of open pits from 2010 to 2020. During that time, we produced about 140,000 tonnes of copper and over 55,000 ounces of gold. Since 2019, we've undertaken exploration drilling, targeting a potential underground extension below the base of those open pits. Last year, we released a feasibility study, which highlighted we had a low-cost copper development project uh, with the potential to throw off a couple of hundred million dollars in free cash over the first four years. And on the back of this study, we secured some funding and commenced uh, underground operations about the middle of last year. As we got underground, started that underground development, uh, the ground, as expected, was really competent. This just helps turn those development phases over quickly and we're able to ramp up to the planned development rates almost immediately. Uh, in late 2023, we established the primary ventilation circuit and as well as a secondary means of egress. And this has enabled us to commence stoping activities with the first stoke blast towards the end of 2023. In 2024, our processing plant was commissioned. Uh, we commenced copper production and began trucking the first copper concentrate from the underground uh, to the point of sale at Port Adelaide and thus becoming Australia's newest copper producer. Over the next few months, uh, we'll open up additional work areas as the underground development advances, and this enables the copper production just to increase towards the planned production rate of about 1.4 million tonnes per annum. So completing this transition from explorer to producer makes Hillgrove Resources one of only a handful of pure copper producers on the ASX, and in doing so in less than eight months uh, on time, on budget, really highlights the team's capability to deliver projects which bodes well as we now bed down the operation at Camman 2 and then seek to grow the business by converting future exploration and development opportunities. You've currently got a four-year mine plan for Camman 2, but what's the production upside like here? And do you have any plans to extend this mine life? Yeah, the current uh, mine plan is just scratching the surface, but I'm, I'm really glad you raised the four-year mine life because it's a question I get quite regularly from investors. And it might surprise you to learn that the short mine life is actually by design and part of the restart strategy. So perhaps just let me explain that in a bit more detail. As a brownfield site, Camman 2 was blessed with fantastic suite of infrastructure assets. So in particular, a fully operational and permitted processing plant, as well as a tail storage facility. Now, having this infrastructure in place and ready to go resulted in the Camman 2 underground being one of the lowest capital intensive copper development projects in the world, which is a major reason why we were able to attract funding and are now producing copper and generating revenue when most juniors are really struggling just to get their projects funded. So we understood that minimizing the capital hurdle to commence the underground would be critical in getting the project funded. So when the open pit operations finished, we made a conscious decision to maintain the processing facility as well as the tails uh, storage facility in such a state that could be restarted quickly for low capital. Uh, but this type of maintenance uh, program comes at a cost and it's difficult to sustain long-term capital and cost outflows when there's no revenue coming in. So our mission over the past few years has been uh, firstly to start generating cash, really just doing enough exploration to develop a fundable mine plan, commence that copper production and re-establish cash flows and stop that cash burn associated with maintenance as quickly as possible. And secondly, using that cash flow to then fresh flesh out the full growth opportunity at Camman 2. So as I said at the top, we've recently achieved the first stage uh, of the strategy by delivering the first copper from the underground to the point of sale at Port Adelaide. So now our attention turns to stage two of that strategy, and that is about growth. 2023 was a transitional year for Hillgrove. How do you see 2024 playing out in terms of growth? Yeah, look, the project economics for the initial underground are great, but the real value comes from expanding mine life and increasing the annual copper production through on-lease exploration. So since 2019, we've drilled 136 holes and returned 158 intercepts of economic grade and width. So this is a strike rate of more than 100%. There are very few explorers that can claim such a success rate over a sustained period of time. And this is really a result of a high degree of geological understanding that we've built up over 10 years of open pit operations, as well as strong continuity of the alteration zones, particularly in the Z plane, so the dip direction. But importantly, this drilling success has translated into a material increase in the resource estimate from every single drill program. So we had less than a million tonnes in 2019, and we have now almost 7 million tonnes today, not including the last 25 kilometres of drilling from the program that was run last year that's currently been put into a revised mineral estimate that I'd expect to see further increase. 
So basically every time we drill, we're hitting the target and every program leads to a material growth in resources. And that's really quite exciting when we consider how underexplored the Kanban 2 system is. So for example, the mine plan only includes two of nine known mineral systems that are either drilled or partially mined as part of the open pit phase. And these two areas uh, in the mine plan, they remain open at depth and a long strike. In fact, we've demonstrated the resource extends 250 metres below the extent of the mine plan with the deepest hole returning three metres, five grams a tonne gold and over 1% copper. <clears throat> but with drilling limited um, at depth, uh, as we focus to re-establish cash flows from operations, we just don't have the data density yet to extend the mine plan to those depths. So further drilling uh, is planned uh, so that we can extend those uh, resources further. In uh, 2023, we also started to drill some of the other areas within the lease, part of that 25 kilometre drill program. And they're now in the process of being put together as revised mineral resource estimates, um, which we would uh, expect to include a maiden resource announcement for Emily Star and North Hub. So these are two mineralized zones, uh, which are not currently within the mine plan. So plenty of opportunity to grow the mine life from on-lease uh, load systems. But I guess the the area that I'm really excited about is Camman 2 Deeps, which is a large geophysical target we discovered late last year. So Camman 2 Deeps is low resistivity anomaly, about a kilometre in strike length, coincident with strong uh, ground gravity as well as heli mag anomalies. It returns a very, very similar resistivity signature to the main load system as potentially just a northern extension of the main load that's just been offset down plunge by fault. So between the Kemen 2 Deeps as well as the other nine mineral load systems we've got on the lease, the expiration target immediately around the process plant is now 60 to 100 million tonnes. Uh, and this is an order of magnitude above our existing mining inventory of only four and a half million tonnes. So even if only a fraction converts, it represents a real opportunity to see material step change to the business value. And at Kemen 2, we have plenty of processing and tails capacity. So the processing facility is only 40% utilized in the current mine plan, which means that uh, we're quickly uh, or able to quickly convert any expiration success uh, into increased cop production without further capital in the processing plant. And given the majority of our costs on site are fixed in nature, the margins of any additional feed uh, coming on from any expiration uh, success uh, return outsized value to the overall project economics. So Chris, some really exciting news flow ahead as we continue to increase cop production from the underground mine, as well as begin to uh, drill these expiration targets. That was CEO and Managing Director of Hillgrove Resources, Lachlan Wallace. Lachlan, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.